practice 11, Adam, and uh, we got some uh, outside linebacker talk today, you know, edge rusher talk today. You know, Coach Nick Williams talked to us today as well as Kyrie Manns, uh, transfer from Maine. And, uh, you know, good to learn about that group because, you know, that's a group that obviously is key. The Buffs were last in the country in sacks last year. They've got to get to the quarterback this year, uh, and it feels like they've got a lot of guys that can do that. I mean, Jordan Dominic, it starts with him, seven and a half sacks last year, which was almost as many as CU had as a team. Uh, but uh, Nick Williams is pretty excited about that group, although, you know, work in progress as well. Yeah, I mean, the two biggest issues for this football program a year ago was the passing offense and the pass rush defense. Yeah. And so, so the fact that it looks like both of those areas are going to be upgraded is going to be the reason that this program makes a sizable jump this fall. And I mean, when you watch the behind the scenes video with Coach Nick Williams and you even are around him in a press setting, uh, I can't imagine being in that group and having an off day because he brings energy every day. And uh, that is a position where you need guys with a motor because it's yeah. kind of like baseball players. You're never going to bat a thousand. You're only really looking for a couple opportunities in a game to make a big play. Yeah. And so you've got to have that motor even when, you know, a bunch of plays have not gone uh, to your way. So uh, having a coach like that, that, that constantly is keeping you on edge and pushing you to uh, bring it every day. I, I know that Nick Williams doesn't have a lot of uh, experience in terms of being a full-time college coach, but he's – been in Georgia's system. He's been at Texas A&M. So he knows what big time football looks like. Yeah. And he also, you know, as we learned in the spring when we talked to him, he's a big time student of the game. I mean, he yeah. loves watching film, breaking down film. Uh, he's, he's been loving learning from South and Sari. Uh, and, you know, he, he, he just seems like a guy that maybe doesn't have the experience, but he maybe is learning, you know, or learning about the game at a rapid pace, you know, and getting to that point to where, you know, he's getting some experience in a different way. And, uh, you know, I, I like this group here in that we talked about Jordan, uh, or, yeah, Jordan Dominic. You also have Derek McClendon. Yep. You know, there's a lot of different guys here that he mentioned that are really kind of stepping up. And he said collectively as a group, this is much better. And the question there was, okay, who else outside of Jordan Dominic and Derek McClendon who yeah. proved it? at a high level at other places with big numbers that they've produced. Uh, who else was going to be in that group? And so for Coach Nick Williams to mention Kyrie Manns today, yeah. for him to mention uh, Taj McCoy, a true freshman, uh, that was big, you know, I think in terms of that's they're going to need some extra bodies there as they go through the season. And yeah. uh, some guys in his room with a, a sense of urgency, you know, outside of Jordan Dominic, guys that are maybe a little bit overshadowed just because Jordan Dominic has made such a splash coming in here. Yeah, and a guy that, uh, you know, local fans know, Arden Walker, yeah. played at Cherry Creek, has been in Missouri the last couple of years. And um, I had a chance to talk to Arden this summer, and he said, this is a tough position to play because there's not a lot of guys that play on the edge early in their careers. they got a lot to learn, um, and he feels like he's just kind of coming into his own. Nick Williams tells us today that Arden Walker is one of the guys stepping up as well. So yeah. so that's good to hear. Savelle Smalls is in that group as well, a guy, former five-star recruit at Washington that didn't do a whole lot at Washington, but sounds like he's stepping up. He's got a second chance here as well. Yeah, and a lot of these guys that came from other Power Fives that – didn't you play a ton it was usually a case like with Bentley as well where they're just really good players in front of them so uh, yeah I, I think that Arden Walker he even got on the field late last season I believe started Missouri's last game last or two, two games, last two games yeah. last year so uh, and, and that's cool there's not not a ton of Colorado guys left on this football roster and so yeah. it'd be a good story if Arden Walker can can return home and, and make a big impact yeah Nick Williams is very charismatic he reminds me of Eric Bieniemy because of the voice, you know, and you and I were here when Bieniemy was the offensive coordinator. Where you know you would hear Bieniemy yelling in the, behind the gates, and then he came out here, nicest guy, but he didn't have a voice. You know, Nick Williams uh, is a yeller, right? And uh, you know, and then he comes out here, and nicest guy, and doesn't have that voice left. And so, um, you know, you, you, I kind of that coaching style. You know, I think it's going to help in this position group. You know, I think that this group, you know, they seem to be responding to what um, he's he's a young guy bringing the energy. And I think that they're responding to it. Yeah, he seems like he's a rising star in this coaching profession that's yeah. going to have a really bright future because, yeah, he can get on the guys, but he's also got a great personality that shows up on social media, which helps yeah. with recruiting. And then I asked him about the recruitment of Shane Cox here to Boulder because – Nick Williams was the primary recruiter there, yeah. and he talked about sitting at the kitchen table, talking with his parents for six hours. Mm -hmm. He's got an engaging personality that really helps him as a recruiter, and he knows what, again, going back to his experience at Georgia and Texas A&M, yeah. he knows what those next-level athletes are supposed to look like. And I know there were some other schools after Shane Cokes, but that was a hell of a projection yeah. by, by Nick Williams and the staff to, to yeah. project him to be what he is because and I think a lot of schools might be scared to, to take an Ivy League player. Yeah.
and they weren't obviously and you know and really to take a player even from Maine like Kyrie Manns right I mean uh, there's there's a lot of guys on this team that are coming from those lower levels and uh, and ready to prove themselves and you know Shane Cox is doing it Kyrie Manns you know we saw him in a video uh, this week to where Nick Williams challenges him he responds big time uh, and so that's a player that you know, again production at a different level coming up and trying to prove him prove himself and uh, you know adjustment to the altitude uh, but it sounds like he's uh, he's making that adjustment it, going back to Taj McCoy I was shocked watching his film that he was not a blue chip recruit yeah. uh, he was all accolades out there in Oklahoma broke his school's sack record and his film is if you haven't watched it yet his huddle film from his senior year of high school go and watch that because yeah. uh, he was my pick as most underrated signee in that class uh, just he pops off the tape and I don't know how much you can expect out of him given that there is so much experience in front of him but hearing his name today and uh, I, I think he's got a really bright future in this program yeah well we're going to find out when games start how deep this group really is Nick Williams thinks they're pretty deep and if, like you said if this position group is upgraded that's huge for this football team because that was the weak point of that defense last year and so uh, that'll do it for us today we'll be back later this week with another analysis video